Hey guys, I am so excited to announce that the movie that you've been waiting for, the documentary Dr. Patient, is now available for rent or purchase at drpatientmovie.com. Check out the trailer here. When I really knew something was wrong was when I started having trouble walking up the stairs. I was supposed to be grateful and happy and healing and well and thriving, but I did not feel that way. I was so sick. Like always, I wanted to find an answer and I had to figure it out, and I had to figure it out to save my own life. So I dove in. Jill is the leading voice in biotoxin illness and chronic conditions that are driven by toxicity. Oh my gosh, you're dealing with mold? You have to work with Dr. Jill Carnahan. Dr. Jill was the first person that actually began to shed some light on the problem. What I do is listen to the patient and we together talk about what else is possible. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> she saved my life. The deepest lessons and most profound insights come in the suffering, come in the dark moments. Self-compassion is the healing transition that, that shifts something inside of us. It's actually the thing that we need most in order to heal. Dr. Patient. Available now at drpatientmovie.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Resiliency Radio, your go-to podcast for the most cutting-edge information in functional and integrative medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Jill, and in each episode, we're going to dive into the heart of healing, transformation, and we talk to innovators, leaders, um, medical researchers, amazing, amazing people who are changing the space and sphere. My goal is to empower you in your personal journey for transformation. Um, hey guys, if you haven't heard, of course, your head's probably in the sand, but my movie Dr. Patient is now out. So be sure, check that out, drpatientmovie.com. You can share it, you can gift it, you can rent it. And I really, really would love to hear your feedback once you've had a chance to take a look at that. Now, today, I am so, so excited about my guest, Dr. Tabitha. Dr. Tabitha Barber has dedicated her life to giving women a voice and a choice when it comes to their health and well-being, overcoming struggles as a young girl, including self-esteem challenges and hurdles of being a high school dropout and teenage mother. She emerged as a successful physician through faith and perseverance. Her unwavering commitment to women's health is evident through her triple board certifications in obstetrics and gynecology, menopause, and functional medicine. As the driving force behind her thriving medical practice, Dr. Tabitha and her team provide compassionate support and care to women national wide. Through her podcast, Gutsy Gyne, Supplement Line, and her international best-selling book, Fast of Faith, she shares insights into the importance of gut health, hormone balance, mindset, and most importantly, nourishing the soul to a true healing path. And this is one of the reasons I am so excited. Welcome, Dr. Tabitha, to the show. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Dr. Jill. This is going to be an awesome, much needed conversation because we need to really heal the body, yes. mind and soul, right? We need to connect all three. Yeah. And so um, I want to hear your story, but I'll just frame this for the listeners. As you know, if you listen to my podcast, I have people from all walks of life, all backgrounds. I, I One thing I feel like I bring to the world is this unconditional love and acceptance. But at the core, I have a deep, deep, deep faith and it drives everything I do. And so I could not be more excited to talk to you about that relationship with God, how it's transformed your life and your book and your practice. And mm -hmm. most of all, that we could just leave our listeners today with a sense of like, how do we find that deeper purpose and meaning? Um, so let's start with your story because story drives everything and you have quite a story. Uh, I'd love to go way back as far as what was in your bio and then kind of how you got into medicine. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I was actually on a phone call earlier today because I'm trying to get my life turned into a TV series. That's how wild it's been. I love it. <laughs> and I'll just say that God has been guiding me the whole way. And I have I had to acknowledge that I got to a point where I just could no longer take credit for the blessings I was receiving. And he made it clear, you know, that we are on this mission together to reach women and help women understand what's happening in their bodies and take back control of their bodies. So, you know, I was a wild child. I didn't 
bow down to authority. I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. I was going to be a rock star. I was going to marry Tommy Lee. Thank goodness that didn't happen. <laughs> but I found myself pregnant um, in 11th grade. I ended up marrying uh, my child's father and we were married for almost a decade. But there was a lot of tragedy during my pregnancy and delivery because I was assigned to an old doctor on the verge of retirement and he made it clear that I was a sunken class citizen. I was on Medicaid and food stamps and he would say things like, you know, I'm getting paid 20 cents on the dollar to take care of you. And so I really was afraid to say anything because I felt like I didn't even deserve to have care, right? And so I was um, just, I went through all kinds of procedures and took all kinds of pills and I had a very traumatic delivery. Unfortunately, uh, he ripped me from front to back and I've never been the same. I had a very traumatic forceps delivery and uh, while I was going through that repair, I was just looking at my daughter and it all just kind of made sense to me. Like you cannot let your brand new baby go ever go through what you're going through. Like you got to figure stuff out. And God made it clear to me, like you have to get your crap together and figure this out. So I went back, I got my GED, I got into a community college and I, you know, eventually went on to become a doctor, but I developed Hashimoto's through that. After my delivery, I went through radioactive iodine treatment that I had no idea what I was signing up for. So it was just one thing after another of these things being done to my body. And I didn't use my voice. I didn't know I had another choice. And so that's why I am so passionate. And I'm just on a mission to help women just speak up for themselves and to know that even if you aren't giving the options from your doctor currently, that doesn't mean they don't exist because even becoming a doctor myself, I didn't know all the options. You know, it wasn't until it failed me and I had to find functional medicine. You can relate to this, right? Like we only give the options that we know. And so I'm here to say there's more to the story than a pill for an ill. Dr. Tabitha, I love hearing your story and I love hearing your just authenticity in the journey because you went through great suffering. And what I hear there too, that's so common to our listeners is this shame, right? This women, like, yeah. like what you went through, like no one should have to feel that feeling. And it, it comes from either people gaslighting, belittling, and sadly, our medical system is one of the biggest players in this um making women feel shame on their bodies or shame in their choices or shame in like, you know, I need help here. I need answers or I need a different way. And I hear that in your journey. And it's so powerful to see how that's transformed. Now you're helping thousands and hundreds of thousands of women out there in that same thing. What, um, first of all, what led you into medicine then? I mean, you clearly told that story, but that's, that's a huge jump to go from where you were and then into medicine. That's like profound. I want to hear that story too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if you're listening to this and you're stuck in a life that you don't love or you're just feeling lost, like your purpose is out there. And sometimes it's coming from your struggles, your your pain, your your tragedies. And so you got to dig deep down and say, like, why is this happening to me? Because I truly believe life is always happening for us. Yes. And so I had a choice after that delivery, after having my thyroid burnt out, like, am I going to just work at the gas station and this is my destiny? Or am I going to change my future for my daughter and myself? And I decided to be brave and just go for it. And I had no idea what that looked like, right? But you just take the very next step that you can possibly see. And for me, my mother-in-law was in nursing school at, I think she was maybe 42 years old at the time, which I thought was old, um, <laughs> looking back. I know. Yeah, right. Um, but she was restarting her career. And so I thought, okay, I'll go to nursing school. That's what she said was a good idea. And 
for the first time, I realized I like science. I'm actually good at school because I was always a CDE student because I didn't care. I wasn't interested. And I got two years of straight A's at this community college. And I realized like, I want to be the one in charge. And I said to one of my professors, I don't want to be a nurse. I want to be the doctor. I want to give the orders. I want to make the decisions. And he said to me in that moment, you can, you can be the doctor, go to Michigan State, I'll write you a letter. And that changed everything for me because I was not seeing more possibilities than being a nurse. You know, I wasn't believing in myself. And he gave me um, just this new way of seeing the world. And looking back, obviously, that was God intervening and speaking through him. And I, went on and I became a doctor because he just put that spark in me. And so what we say to each other absolutely matters. And that's what I love to share with women is like, if something's on your heart and you're feeling like you want to say something to someone, you might not even know why, just do it because you might spark like the biggest, most important shift of their whole life. Right. Yeah. So I, I fast forward 20 years, I'm a practicing attending physician. I, I'm on top of the world, so to speak. I'm chief of staff. I was chief of the department for 10 years. Um, my patients love me. And Jill, I was dying. I was so miserable. I was barely surviving. I got to the point that I couldn't walk away from the OR table because I was in such excruciating back pain. I literally would just hang there in half until my back released and I could move and walk out of the OR. And it was because I was giving to everyone and just completely neglecting myself. A huge part of that was that's part of your training as becoming a doctor. You ignore your bladder, you ignore your hunger, you, you just like, you give to everyone else. But it was also my Catholic upbringing and like I had all this shame around the fact that I needed to take care of myself. So I just didn't. I lived on donuts and Mountain Dew and whatever was at the nurse's station to get me through that next delivery or that next surgery. And I was slowly killing myself. And it wasn't until I had a failed back surgery. I took six weeks off like a good patient, right? Third night on call, I re-injured and couldn't move. I was stuck in a delivery and I couldn't function. And I just thought, okay, I don't know what needs to happen. Let me go back to the surgeon. And he's, you know what he said to me? What's well, no big deal. Back surgery is like lace potato chips. You can't have just one. We'll just put some rods and screws in there. You might herniate above or below. You might need more surgery. And I was like, <gasps> time oh out what are you talking about i'm 40 years old yeah. you want to do more surgery and i did the unthinkable and i quit working for four months i went on this journey i found dr amy myers dr mark hyman and i just started listening to podcasts and reading books and i had no idea this whole world of health and wellness even existed because as a doctor Okay, you might not realize this listening right now, but we are trained in disease and diagnoses. We are not trained in health and wellness. I didn't know how to make people healthy. Yeah. It was a foreign concept. And so once I found this whole new world, like I couldn't go back. I healed myself. I never had a second surgery. I've run, you know, 10Ks since then. And I could no longer be an OBGYN. I just couldn't do that Band-Aid medicine anymore. And so now my new mission is like, tell women what, the truth. Tell them what's happening. Wow. There's so <laughs> many points I want to tell you. I know. Like, I story. <laughs> no, it's just like so exciting because it really is like, I love that you shared and many of my listeners know this because we talk, you know, frankly about medical education and the the good and then the not so good. Right. And we both know yeah. that we both were traditionally trained. Um, but so many patients are frustrated with the, the lack of answers. And it's literally ignorance in the sense of most doctors really want to be healers. They really want to help. And, you know, I'm sure you and I have both experienced this. Most of our colleagues in functional medicine, including both of our stories, 
when we come to the end of what what regular medicine can provide, either an illness in ourselves, like your back, for me, it was um, breast cancer, Crohn's disease, and all the stuff I've been through, or a loved one, like that we have friends or family, um, and we don't have the answers, then we're like, well, what else is possible, right? And then we, if we can counter function this, and I love that you said the truth is once we get, it's like we get the virus, <laughs> we joke about the virus of functional medicine, and we can't undo it, you can't go back when I moved out here to start my functional medicine practice in Colorado, I was going to moonlight like urgent care to make some money because I wasn't making any money in the first year of my practice. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can do that because I'm just going to be prescribing antibiotics and blood pressure medications and nothing wrong with that. But when you know that there's a root cause way to go deeper and actually reverse illness that we were taught is irreversible, it's like you can't. It's like unethical, right? <laughs> to go, right. I yeah. actually tried to do functional yeah. medicine Fridays in my OBGYN mm -hmm. office. You know, I got administration to let me do this hour long appointments. Let me bill for time. And it didn't even last two months. And they were like, nope, you're not making enough money. Right. You can't do that anymore. And I was an amazing surgeon. Like, I'm just going to be honest. People came from far and wide because I was an advanced robotic surgeon. I loved advanced, difficult endometriosis cases, fibroid cases, um, prolapse surgeries. But I, I, what I realized was I wanted to talk to them about their diet and their yeah. stress and all of these things. And I didn't want to do surgery anymore. And I was you know, I just, I didn't feel right about it as much as I loved that. I knew I had to give that part of my life up and start this new journey. And so it's really scary, right? I come from nothing. Like I was the first person in my, my family to graduate from a four-year college. And here I am with this yeah. fancy 401k and this beautiful salary and this established life. And I gave it all up for who knows what, like you said, yeah. you didn't make any money. Like I had no guarantee of anything. I was risking it all, but I knew it was the right thing to do and that God was going to take care of me. And so if you're feeling like I just, I can't, I have so many patients, honestly, who are stuck in their health crises and it's because they hate their jobs, they hate their relationships, like something needs to shift, but they're afraid. Yeah. And I promise you, like, it is so much better on the other side. You have to take that leap of faith and go for it. And it's going to be okay. I promise you. Hey, everybody. I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science and Faith is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. Oh, that is such a good word because I know so many people listening right now are hearing us and they're like, yeah, but it's scary and it is scary. You know, there's a chapter in my book called Believe, Act, Wait, and you know how it is to write a book. We're going to talk about your Fast to Faith book. And I hope if you're listening out there, you will get a copy of this book. It's profound and so powerful. Um, but one thing in the Believe, Act, Wait, you know how it is, as you're writing your book, you kind of realize, oh, like it's almost like therapy, right? Because <laughs> you're writing out your story. Mm -hmm. and you're so for me, I didn't even realize this pattern to my life until I wrote it in the chapter. And it's like this thing that over and over happens. So it's believe for the impossible, believe for like something God promises you, like, like, could you be a doctor? I was the same way. I grew up in a farm family in Illinois, no doctors, a few nurses, no medical, like no one had set that precedent. And it was like you, another, it was actually a chiropractor who said, Jill, you're I love chiropractors. So this is, just came from him, but he was an old school and he's like, you're too smart to be a chiropractor, go to med school. <laughs> um, and so that was my, just like that person who spoke into your life, my um, permission to do something different. And I did, and it was terrifying, but that belief has to be there first. And you and I both had this belief in something greater, something that maybe seemed a little impossible. And I will say, if you're listening, always 
the great things that God wants to do in your life seem impossible to us. And that's where he wants us in that faith. So you believe, act is do what's in our power. You went to Michigan State. I went to medical school and did the applications and all that stuff. And you do what's in your power. And then the way part is the part where we can't fulfill that, where we need God to show up. Um, and I'd love to hear maybe an example or two or how you felt that God has shown up when you, because we have that, we go forward. And so if you're out there thinking about your impossible situation, you need to believe it's possible first. You need to believe in your heart that you can do anything you set your mind to with the help of your higher power and God in your life. And then second, you need to do what you can, which is the act. You have to step forward. You have to step out. I described it like if you're in a fog and you have just stones on a pond and you're like taking one step, you can only see one stone ahead of you. And then the next one appears and then the next one. But you have to have the faith to believe that the path will reveal itself. Um, and then the weight is the miracle part where for me, it's prayer and like, God, I need you to show up. <laughs> Do you have any stories like that of where you did the believe act and like God showed up in a big way for where we couldn't accomplish it? On our, on oh my our gosh. <laughs> Almost on a daily basis, <laughs> honestly. And I'll tell you, the more you are open to receiving God's blessings and you do trust and just lead your life in a faithful way, the more you're going to see it, the more you're going to recognize it. And it's just going to happen more and more. You know, I think about when I started my online fasting program, I would teach women how to fast and, you know, it would be eight weeks. They'd have amazing results and then they would go back to their normal lives and the weight would come back on and they wouldn't feel good anymore. And it wasn't until I added the faith piece that women really understood how to um, surrender to God and actually get their strength from a higher power and stop relying on their own willpower or things that just isn't sustainable in the long term. And so I started seeing these transformations. And the one of the first groups I had, I had a 70-year-old woman who had uncontrolled diabetes. I think her hemoglobin A1C was 8.5. And it's supposed to, right, be around five, something like that. So she she went through and my fasting program is a progressive fasting program. So it teaches you how to break up with sugar, how to go from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. And it's this stepwise approach of breaking up with snacks and getting fat adapted and it leads up to a three-day water fast. And she was so committed to believing in her body again, because we had all these conversations about how she had just given up on her body and she really didn't think she was going to shift. And um, we got her to believe by reading scripture, by getting into the word every day and hearing what God had for her, that she was like, okay, I'm all in. I'm going to do this three-day water fast. She came out of that a new woman. Like she was... Uh, unstoppable. She couldn't brag about herself enough. She rechecked her hemoglobin A1C. It was six something. And Mm -hmm. I was just, that was the turning point for me was if you teach people how to believe in themselves again and rely on God for their strength, they can do anything. And to watch people reverse diseases and heal and feel amazing again, like she went from I think she could only go outside for an hour max a day to going to her son's graduation um, multiple states away and feeling great. And like that instilled in me, you're doing the right thing. Keep going patient because I want everything on my time. I want it yesterday or right now, you know, and God is like, you have to just trust me. I'm lining everything up in a way that you don't even understand. So just trust my timing. And I ended up creating a method out of that called the faith it method, because it was so powerful to see, like, if you just lead with faith, you get into a fasting lifestyle, you ask God, for what you want. You ink it down, like you were saying, because you get so much clarity, like it stops being this jumbled mess in your brain. And you're like, oh yes, there's the solution. And then you trust God's timing. And these acts are so powerful. Like they just can create massive shifts in your health. So I've just 
you know, been trying to teach women, like, you got to faith it. Stop faking it till you make it. Like, that doesn't work. You got to faith it and you have to get into action because action creates clarity and it shows God that you're serious and he wants to partner with you and give you all you, that you dream of having, right? Yes. Yes. And even more, it's always like this or something better, God. Like Always. <laughs> always. Like, that's the yeah. amazing part is just start believing. And what I see over and over again in my practice, you know, we're seeing people from all over is they're just, they're giving up or they're assuming that getting well and healing is an outside job. Like somebody's going to do it for them. Someone has the answer for them. And I explain like, when I was a surgeon and I would cut through your skin and cut through your fascia and your uterus or remove an organ, I would put the sutures in to close you back up, but I didn't heal you. Your tissues actually grew back together on their own. I just put them next to each other. Your body does the healing. You have to look back to yourself and give your body what it needs. And that is where you're going to see all the changes that you're looking for. So for anybody listening, like, I know it sounds almost like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, but you have everything you need to heal. It's all within you. You just need to tap into it, you know, click your heels, tap into God. And honestly, if you want to change your body, if you want to change your heal your body, you have to change your mind. It all starts in the mind. And if you can get control of your mind and shift that, you can change anything about your physical body. Oh, love, love every word that you're saying. And I know there's people out there listening that needed to hear this today. One thing as I listen to you um, that comes to mind is both you and I went through medical school and in order to survive, we were taught like literally our medical education is suppress your needs. Like you said, it's so calm, like don't eat, don't pee, don't, you know, see how long you can stay up. How long can you go without food? Like there's this almost underground current of bragging rights. And you remember the days, at least for me, it was like, if you're sick, you, you come into work. Like this was pre COVID oh, absolutely. unless you are dead or in the ICU, you are reporting to work. You, there's no, like, I remember having cyclical fevers with my Crohn's like up to one Oh one five. I was in the ER working like until I passed out, <laughs> but all that to say, like, there's this, and, and what that breeds is why I'm speaking to those women out there or anyone listening, we are suppressing, right? We're suppressing, we're dissociating from our body gives us these signals like, oh, there's a little bit of um, heartburn, or maybe my stomach's upset, or those are signals that something's mm -hmm. not right, or that maybe they were imbalanced. And you and I have the stories so similar of like, for many years, we just like, shut up body, we need to perform, we need to show up, we need to, and we did a really good job, right? I'd same as you, I could relate to your story, but part of your healing and mine and what you're teaching women is how do you reconnect with this beautiful, beautiful creation that God has given us? Because it has all the information we need. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I mm -hmm. think that part of the healing is this, and also there's shame and hatred towards our bodies, right? As women, we have parts that we don't like. And, and I love that you're talking about how do we engage with our bodies, love ourselves, love this creation that God has given us, and also start to listen to ourselves for clues on how to heal. Oh my goodness. Yes. You cannot heal a body you hate. Yes. That's what I was trying to do for so long. I was mad at my body because it couldn't function sleep deprived. It couldn't function on garbage Franken foods that aren't <laughs> nourishing. They're depleting all the things. And you hit on something really important. All those symptoms are messages. They're warning signs. Your body's trying to tell you something. Your body has incredible innate intelligence, and it's always trying to be in balance and get into healing. That's what it does. That's its job. And we are preventing it because we keep adding in the insults and the injuries. We don't give it what it's screaming for. And so you know, chapter three, I talk about find your intuition because you used to know what those signals meant when you were a little girl. I remember getting stomach aches when I could tell somebody was sketchy and I shouldn't be around them, you know, or like this is a dangerous situation. 
your body does tell you, but we have just been ingrained, like ignore that, push through, keep going, just ignore. We do the same thing with periods and in, in our girls and ourselves, like you're having heavy periods, painful periods. Well, just drug it. Just get rid of that symptom. When your body's like screaming at you, there's a problem. You have estrogen dominance. There's a problem. You have gut dysbiosis. Something is happening. You have mold toxicity, but we don't listen. We just cover up the symptoms. And so maybe you just need to get the book and go straight to chapter three and read about this because our gut has a whole separate nervous system that is talking to us through the vagus nerve. And if we could just get back in tune and figure out what is our body saying to us, that is power. That is part of how you take back control. And I teach women the difference between, say, like sugar cravings, which are coming from your addiction to sugar or gluten. I had a gluten addiction and um, the bad bacteria or yeast that it's feeding, like they're sending you these signals. You need to break up with them and kill that off. And then you can get some clarity around what your body is saying and also start to discern like, we don't need to give in to every fleshly desire. Could you imagine if we did that with sex or other things, drugs? Like that's where people get into trouble. Yet we okay it when it comes to sugar and those types of things and alcohol. And we really need to get that into check because it's destroying our health. Absolutely. And so getting some discernment around that and learning to maybe ride the hunger wave. You know, a lot of people are surprised to hear about ghrelin, our hunger hormone. Yes, it goes up and we get hungry, but it's a pulsatile hormone. It comes back down 15, 20 minutes later. If you ride that wave and you don't give in, you're not going to be hungry in half an hour. So maybe you don't need to eat every time you feel that way. Maybe you need to really get, take back control and honor your body. You know, when I really started to figure out like, where are you taking me with this whole thing? God, like teaching women, you know, how to tap in and read scripture for their faith. Like, where does fasting come in? What are you saying about our body? Like, I really did some deep diving and, and really tried to figure all this out and when I came upon 1 Corinthians 6, like it was a slap in the face. It says, do you not know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. And I was treating my body like a garbage can. I was dumping in it whatever. I was abusing it. And then I was yelling at it and mad at it because it wouldn't perform. <laughs> and God is saying, like, I gave you this body for this earthly experience for a reason, and you are not taking care of it. There's a problem. And so I would invite you to evaluate how are you treating your body? What is your mind saying to your body? Does your mind need to be like cut off at the knees? Is it talking crazy? Is it saying things like you're so fat, you're so old, you're so slow, like those are all lies that we have to get rid of, that we we have to reprogram your mind if you want to change how you're feeling and how you're functioning without a doubt. And it's all very possible, but it takes some uh, truth. It, it takes looking at yourself and being honest with what am I saying to myself? How am I treating my body? What is happening? And am I ignoring my body and it's actually screaming at me, you know, and we can figure all that out and you could be unrecognizable a year from now, six months from now. Wow. Such great tips and information. Now, fasting, we've talked a little bit about, and of course your book is Fast to Faith. Um, and 
how did you incorporate the fasting? Because there's a lot of people out there talking about that and it's powerful, but I love your perspective because it's almost like a discipline and um, I can see it as something, one more thing and God teaches us to fast. So it's like from the creator, but in that it's almost like if you feel ashamed of your body or you feel like you're not enough or all these um, wrong messages and you start to fast and get control over your hunger, it, to me, it seems like it would be very empowering. Is that what you found or how did you find that to be so powerful in your book oh and in your program? Yeah, absolutely. It's so powerful. And I came upon it when I was laying in bed for five days after I re-entered my back and I couldn't move. You know, my husband's carrying me to the toilet. That's about the extent of me moving. And I just opened the Bible and started going, well, first I, I realized about day three or four, like, oh my gosh, I don't think I've really eaten anything. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. And then I started to remember my internship and my surgical residency training. And one of the first things that you're taught as a surgeon is to write NPO orders, meaning you tell the nurse, do not feed my patient again until I tell you to. And there were a few reasons for that. But one of the biggest reasons is that when you eat, you are using resources, you're using energy. And so if you've just had surgery, we don't want to feed the patient, we need you to heal. And so all your energy needs to go toward healing. And so we just leave the gut alone. And my body was unintentionally fasting, trying to heal me. And so I was like, what does God say about fasting? I know uh -huh. he's like, I do Lent. What's that about? And then I just started studying and I realized like whenever God wants you closer to him or he wants you to heal or he wants you to have more discernment, like he, he wants you to get into that fasting mode. And really it should be a lifestyle because that is how our body was created to function. We did not exist with grocery stores on every corner and DoorDash thousands of years ago. We had to go times without food on a regular basis and then we would eat. And so what I have found that works amazing for women is this feast famine cycling where you're eating the carbs and then you're not eating the carbs because we're not little men. We can't fast like little men. Like husbands will do it. They'll drop 30 pounds and feel amazing. Women will struggle the whole time and be hangry and jittery, maybe lose five pounds and then give up. And it's because we need to do this carb cycling and we need to do it in a way that doesn't tell our thyroid we're starving because that will downregulate in a hot minute and be like, oh, she's starving us to death. Hold on to everything yes. even tighter and downregulate your, your metabolism. So we have to learn how to do it in a way that actually encourages our body to thrive and to function. And that's why the progressive plan that I've that I'm teaching has seemed to be the game changer, especially in menopause. Like menopausal women, they thrive with fasting. They just, their brain works so good. They have so much more energy. Like everything just functions beautifully. I love seeing that transformation, but you got to do it the right way. And I promise you, your body was created to just live this way. It honestly was. Uh, that's such a great explanation too. I remember um, years ago hearing patients come in and say, doc, if I just could not, didn't eat, I'd feel great. Cause they would always have this after meal we call postprandial fatigue or brain fog or not mm -hmm. feeling well. And then I learned about LPS, of course, you know, endotoxemia, which is how we dump all of us, even those who are healthy um, to some extent, dump these bacterial coatings into our bloodstream after we eat and the food and the fats that we eat carry that. And this LPS stuff is like underlying diabetes, obesity, heart disease, insomnia, mood, horror. I mean, you could name of 101 things and it's so common. So it's so cool that even the God's word and kind of his instructions actually fit with a physiology. Like it's, it's kind of really, of course, <laughs> but it really yes. is, is even more powerful that way because it makes sense. Is there any contraindications like um, states of uh, obviously probably pregnancy or whatever, but what is there a few times when a woman would maybe want to be more cautious about fasting? 
I usually say, you know, definitely pregnancy and breastfeeding. And then if you're trying to get pregnant, you're in those fertile years, like that's your goal. You don't necessarily want to do it at any extended fasts if you're actively trying to get pregnant because it can interfere with your period. But if you're not getting pregnant because you have medical conditions, you might want to do this before attempting to get pregnant because it can heal so much. That's the incredible thing is when you fast, all those bad bacteria and yeast start to die because you're not feeding them the sugar and the things that's keeping them alive. And the cells in our intestines, in our gut, they start to heal. You know, they're turning over every 48 to 72 hours. And so if you aren't disrupting them and destroying them with the foods, I love to call them Franken foods because that's not really food. Um, or even some people will start reacting to normal, healthy foods with food sensitivities, like you said, because they have these overgrowth of bad bacteria, they're having inappropriate immune responses, they're having these endotoxins destroy them. And so all of that stops and gives your body time to heal. Let's not even, we haven't even touched the topic of diabetes right. and insulin resistance and all of that. Like that's a whole nother thing that is fatty liver. Like we are, our standard American diet is destroying us. You know, 96 million of us have prediabetes. I see it every single day. And women are frustrated. Why can't I lose weight? Why am I waking up in the middle of the night? Why do I feel terrible? Because your insulin is being produced 24 seven. Every time you eat, you got to produce more insulin. Your cells don't hear the signal. You got to make more. And you're just stuck in this vicious cycle. And fasting like helps stop all of that. It's just, it's so powerful. Wow. Um, and like you said, I'm sure you see far reaching. Do you have any examples of maybe a story or two of a patient that like, maybe it was something like Hashimoto's or something that seemed unrelated that just resolved as they were doing your program? Oh my gosh. Migraines are the biggest, most common thing I see. Um, because women, you know, they go decades with these migraines or they get new onset migraines and menopause. And oftentimes it's related to this chronic increased intestinal permeability, AKA leaky gut and reacting to foods inappropriately, having these endotoxins going to the bloodstream, all the systemic inflammation, and when they stop that vicious cycle, they're no longer getting the headaches or the eczema or the brain fog and the fatigue. And it can be really powerful. And um, I myself put my Hashimoto's pretty much into remission. I mean, my thyroid still needs support um, because they tried to kill it off, yeah. essentially. <laughs> and so I'm on <clears throat> levothyroxine and lyothyronine. But my antibodies, my TPO antibodies were just over 900. They didn't even give me a number. They just, it was too high for a number. And now it's like five. Wow. And that is just so powerful to me because I lived with this uncontrolled Hashimoto's up until about five years ago when I really dialed in the fasting lifestyle and obviously removed gluten hundred percent and just focused on an anti-inflammatory dial, but it diet, but it really was the fasting that took it to the final level of just calming my immune system. Because like you mentioned, every time I ate, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sit on the couch and not function for the next two hours. I was like, something's definitely wrong with uh -huh. my gut. And so I got into this pattern of feeling better when I didn't eat, functioning better. And so I need to watch it because I literally will regularly go up until 4 or 5 p.m. without eating because I function so much better. And I'm like, oh, I need to get that fat and protein in and that fiber. And so I have to watch that. But it really is a testament to the fact that when you fat when you're in a fasted state your body can just thrive it really can yeah gosh i can see how there's so much power and and stories and again this the pro program makes so much sense 
um, one other thought was uh, just in functional medicine, we're not taught this in medical school, but um, autoimmunity is considered, I remember my doctor telling me I had Crohn's disease, this is lifelong, you're going to need immune modulating drugs, and there's a spiel. And now I talk about, as you are, the reversing the irreversible, which is almost any autoimmune disease and curing the incurable. So these things that in medical school were taught are just static lifelong states with your program. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. seeing these actually reversing things that were considered irreversible, even diabetes, right? Of course you're seeing that. Absolutely. <laughs> definitely <laughs> diabetes, definitely fatty liver, positive ANA markers, women like you know, they're on the path to systemic yeah. sclerosis and things like that. And we are making those antibodies negative. That means your immune system is no longer attacking your own body inappropriately. Like to me, that is so exciting and so powerful. And it's your, your immune system was just trying to protect you. That's what I want to get across to people is your body is always working for you, yeah. not against you. We think like it's betraying me. I just, I hated my body for everything it was doing. And it was trying to protect me from all of the stuff I was bringing yeah. into it and how I was living. And once you can get into real, a relationship where you're honoring your body and you're like, thank you yes. for that warning. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for downregulating my thyroid. I, I don't want to gain weight and have constipation, but now I know what's happening and I can go and investigate and figure it out. So if we just come at our body from a different place, a place of love and respect, you're going to make way more progress than if you just keep being angry and feeling like it's failing you because it's just, it's got amazing innate intelligence and it's not failing you. It's reacting and responding appropriately. Uh, so, so well said. Um, just a couple last questions. The first one is looking back at that young girl who went through so much and yet those things transformed who you are. What would you say to that young 15, 18 year old girl or, or wherever that was in your life. Oh my goodness. I would have told her to stop eating all the gluten and dairy and the sugar way long ago. Uh -huh. um, I wish I would have learned that before 40 because that destroyed so much of my life. I was in a lot of pain for a long time. Um, so I would definitely give her that advice. She probably wouldn't have taken it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, to always ask why, just to keep searching for answers and to be in a mind of just curiosity, not being angry, not being frustrated, but being curious, like, God, what are you trying to tell me? Body, what are you trying to tell me? What can I learn from this trial, this tribulation? And just be content knowing that God's got you and there's something greater on the other side of all of that. And you're going to make it through. You are. I promise. Oh, so good. Those are fantastic sound bites. Um, last question, which you kind of alluded to, but I want to just speak to some. Not everybody listens to, to me has faith like you and I do, and that's okay. Um, but I wonder about that woman out there that's like, yeah, that's great for you, ladies. You know, you know God's power and you've seen it. And you and I both could tell story after story after story. What do we say to that woman who yeah. is like, I don't know if I have the faith. I, I'm not sure. What could you tell her? Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you asked me this because I, like I mentioned, I was raised Catholic and I was given a lot of beliefs and I started. I got angry at the church. I remember um, being about 20 years old and someone I knew committed suicide and they didn't acknowledge her in church that Sunday. They didn't mention her name and her entire family was sitting there. And I just thought it wasn't for her. I know you think she sinned, but it is for her entire family that's sitting here grieving. We need to acknowledge them. And so that really set into me like the difference between religion and spirituality, religion and faith. And you can take or keep religion. That's up to you. 
I, I, I love when people find a church home, they, because community is everything. And that's what I'm trying to grow is the sisterhood of women, because we thrive in community. I believe that's how we were created to be. But sometimes organized religion can really get in the way of your faith and your spirituality. So I would invite you, if you're listening to this, like, don't be afraid to just start talking to God in an honest way, like, the father you never had. A lot of us, our fathers, you know, they didn't show up the way we wanted them to, um, if at all. And God wants to be that unconditionally loving father who is a provider in giving you guidance and direction and teaching you and just holding your hand the entire way. But because we don't understand that kind of perfection and love, like it's hard for us to even accept or acknowledge or to seek in, in any of that. So once I really acknowledged like, oh my gosh, you do want the best for me. You do want, you put these dreams in my heart. You do want all of this to happen. Like, let's do this together. Let me rely on you. Everything started to shift. And it was just me having real authentic conversations with him. Like, I'm struggling, God. I don't get this. I'm, you know, I'm sad. I'm angry. And, and I need you to come in right now and show me some semblance of hope, some one next step, something. And if you just start getting into an attitude of gratitude and thanking him before it's done. That's what really shifted me. As soon as I'm conscious and awake in the morning, I start rattling off the gratitude. Thank you that you're giving me an amazing day. Thank you that I'm going to have a fabulous connection with Dr. Jill. Thank you that my patients are healing. And I just like, I thank him as if it's already done. Literally, I tell you, those things start to be done because that is energetically what happens. Like quantum physics yes. isn't made up. It's like actual science. And that is what happens. You attract the, those things that you are thankful for. So play around with that. And I can teach you that. Like we ended up creating Fast to Faith as an app because like the program was great it's online but it's only run twice a year like live and then the book is great but you're on your own so i'm like we need an app where these women are coming together and i'm you know i'm just yes. pouring into them and i'm teaching them the faith and method and i'm teaching them how not to be afraid of the bible and how to see themselves as as a, in the bible God is talking to you in this very moment. It's not for men 2000 years ago. It's a living, nourishing word that actually will speak life into you whenever you ask. And so if you can get that, like that's going to change everything. It's incredible. And so give me seven days. Like we have a free seven day trial on the app and you might be surprised um, how easy it is. Oh, Dr. Tabitha, that's a great way to end and so powerful. I really love, I'm reading a book called uh, Power Versus Force, and it's not a religious book, but at the core, it's quantum love and unconditional acceptance, not only to those around us, but to our own bodies. That's the transformation. That's the higher yeah. energy. And that's what God teaches us versus rules and regulation and judgment and all those. It's very different energy. And I'm sure that you're speaking to some women who have had the latter experience and maybe been turned off to that. But talk to God. I love that. That's simple, right? You can all do that and test him. He's pretty good for that. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. And but don't, don't believe treat him, him right. Yes. Don't treat him like a genie in a bottle. He's not there to just make <clears throat> your wishes come true. You know, he is there to guide you and direct you and give you an amazing life. And sometimes what you are asking for and what you think is best for you actually isn't because he sees everything. He sees things you're not seeing and he might be preventing you from major heartache or heartbreak. And like, you think it's a bad thing that you didn't get what you want, but there might be something even better. So you got to just keep trusting and believing. I promise you. Amazing. Now I'm sure people, if you haven't already, while you're watching the show, bought the book, you need to go out and get it. But where can people find you, your programs, share with, and if you're driving, don't take this down. This will be in all the show <laughs> notes, but for now, go ahead and tell us where people can find you. 
Yeah, it's super simple. DrTabitha.com. It's three A's, no I. And Fast to Faith is fasttofaith.com or go on the Fast to Faith app. Try it for seven days. Like I just want to pour into you and show you what's possible, especially if you're at the halfway point in your life and you're like, man, things are starting to look different. My kids are growing up. Like things are changing. I don't love my job anymore. Like there's a whole new future for you. I promise. Uh, this episode has been one of my favorites. <laughs> so, oh, thank you so much, Dr. Tabitha and everyone out there listening. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Of course, you can find this on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts or my YouTube channel. And if you want the transcripts, you can find them all at jillcarnahan.com. Thanks again, Dr. Tabitha. This has been amazing. Thank you.